What's up? I'm FusePS and this is part two of the coffee table tutorial. So if you haven't watched part one, check that out. Link in the description. I might put it somewhere here. Yeah. Uh, in previous tutorial, we covered advanced sketching techniques and we created the hairpin legs of the coffee table. Today, I'm going to go through some parametric tables, going to go through some linking files and show you how to bring in parts from McMaster car. So with that said, let's get rolling. All right, so for this tutorial, we're going to start by using the uh, change parameters tool right here. So I've actually customized my toolbar. I'm going to reset my panel customization. And basically, if you want to customize your toolbar, all you have to do is hover over the tool. You see this little upward swinging arrow here. Click on that, and it's just going to add it to the toolbar at the top. So first things first, I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to add a few parameters. So I'm going to create one called uh, wood, and I'm going to specify this one, and I'm going to make this 22 millimeters. I'm going to add another one in, and I'm going to call this one tool, and I'm going to say this is six millimeters. Now, the reason I'm creating one in here called tool is I know that when I model this and I manufacture it, I'm going to be manufacturing this using CNC milling. Because I'm using CNC milling, I can estimate and also predict what the uh, tool bits I'm going to use are basically based on the tool library I have. Um, the reason I'm putting this in, if I have any inward corners, so if I've got a 90 degree like this and I'm going to be milling into it, well, CNC mills cut with a round bit and so I'm not going to get a perfect corner. If I want a perfect corner, I'd have to go through and file it. By specifying what the tool is, when I set inward fillets, I can fillet them to the, in, the tool I'm going to use. And then if I change it later, I can just come in here and change that. So just hit OK. OK. And let's start modeling this up. So I'm going to go to Sketch, Create Sketch. And I'm going to click on the ground plane here. Toolbar shows up. Sketch palette on the right, exactly what I expect. I'm going to hit R on the keyboard for rectangle. Click once. Pull that out. I'm not going to pay attention to the dimensions because I'm going to add them in afterwards. So I click on my bottom here and I'm going to make my coffee table about 1200 across and I'm going to make it 450 deep. And I can double click the middle mouse button and that's going to bring the whole thing into view. That's looking good. I like that ratio. Uh, I can stop the sketch and double click to bring everything into view again. Then I'm going to go over to create and extrude, click on my surface here, and I'm going to specify that this is wood. Now the reason I'm specifying a uh, user parameter for the wood thickness, the stock I have is kind of warped. Until I measure that properly, um, I'm going to want to make that adjustable because I may find that when I face the wood off, that actually like not a huge amount of it is usable and I might need to face more off until I get it nice and flat. So by making it variable, I know that I can very quickly make changes later down the line when I need to. Next up, I'm going to do some chamfers for the design. So I'm going to go to modify, chamfer, and I'm going to just chamfer my corners off because I like that kind of truncated look on the coffee tables. And I think, let's see what, let's change this back to equal distance. Let's go with 50. That looks good. Next, I'm going to add another chamfer, I'm going to modify chamfer, and this time I'm going to be chamfering the underside because I want to make it look a little bit thinner than it really is. Um, so if I look at this from the front view and then just drag a window from left to right like that, I can pick all of those under edges without actually needing to go through and manually selecting them. Um, I also know that the chamfer bit I'm going to be using is actually not 45 degrees, it's um, it's 30. So in here, rather than doing equal distance, I'm going to do distance and angle. And I know that I want my um, my chamfer to be two thirds of uh, the of the overall um, coffee table itself. So if I put in wood over two, that would be half. So if I do wood over 1.3. Uh, let's go with 1.5, that looks better. And forgot to change the angle, not a big deal. I can double click on my chamfer here and specify that the angle is 30 degrees. And you'll see there that that updated. So if I zoom in on that, do it again, 
that's 45, that's 30, that's more accurate, that's the actual bit I have. I'm going to hit OK on that and then go to the home view. And that's pretty much it for the actual coffee table top. So now let's link the files in from the leg, show you how that works, and we'll do some stuff with McMaster car as well. Um, so to link the file in, what I'm going to do is open up my data panel, and I'm already in the project where the stuff is saved. So I've called this one Boston Apartment. And um, I'm going to start with the hairpin leg. So if I right click on this one and then go insert into current design, there it is, it's popped in. I uh, just need to rotate that by 90 degrees. And now I can position it. So I'm just gonna pull this down to about here. Um, neat little trick to line things up nice and easily. If I go over here into my move slash copy dialog box, I can set the pivot to the top here and verify. And now if I grab that blue arrow and move it downwards and then, and then click on the face there, it's actually gonna snap to it. So this is now lined up with that bottom surface and now I can position the leg how I want to. You'll also notice that the leg I have in the design is not the one that I did in the tutorial. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. So let me position this leg and I'm gonna put it about here, that looks good. Hit okay on that. And then if I go to the home view that's our first leg in place. Now, the reason this leg looks different is I actually intentionally changed the file over here in the hairpin legs uh, to this design. Now, what I can do with the linked file, you can see the file here is linked as a little link symbol. I can actually right click on it and hit choose version and you'll see all the different saves I've done on that file so I can pick the one I want. I'm going to go with V4 because that's the actual leg that I'm going to be using. And if I hit OK, you'll see the file updates to the previous one. I also get a little warning symbol here telling me that the component is out of date because I'm using the old one. Well, it's going to do that because the latest version of the file is this. But I can actually fix this in a way by opening up hairpin legs over here and promoting the previous design up. And now if I hit get latest, nothing's gonna have changed because I actually pushed that one to the top of the list, but the warning's now gone. So next thing I'm gonna do, let's just close the data panel down here. Uh, looking at the underside again, I can now use the points on the center of these which is reverse engineered from the real hairpin leg to specify where the holes need to be drilled for the threaded inserts that I'm purchasing. So what I'll do first is go to sketch, create sketch, and I'm just gonna click on that underface there. And then I'm gonna go to sketch, project slash include and hit project. And now I can just click on those circles and you'll see when I hit stop sketch, if I hide the hairpin leg, I brought those circles in and I have their center points. With those center points now, I can make the drill holes and the pre-drill holes that I need for my threaded inserts. Okay, so do, to do the holes, what I wanna do is go to create and then hole. And I'm gonna use the from sketch multiple holes. Now I already know the threaded inserts that I'm gonna use so I can put the dimensions in, but then we'll go through McMaster car as well and we can find the part we need, select it and insert it into the drawing. So I'm gonna go from sketch, I'm gonna pick my holes. Now, I know based on the one that I used that I need a 3 8 inch pre-drill hole. So I can put in 0.375 inch. And I'm gonna leave the diameter as 11 millimeters. And in case you've never used the hole tool before, if I look at this from the right, you'll notice that the drill hole actually has a point on it. And the reason for that is the whole tool actually simulates drilling and so it leaves the point from the drill bit in as well. Now let's say you were uh, making a hole using a flat end mill, you would come in here and you change your tip angle to 180 instead. 118 however is pretty much a standard drill bit. Some of them come in a 135 angle so you may want to come in and change that. That's just a handy tip to note. So you can hit OK on that 
We'll go to the home view, flip this around and zoom in on this guy. I can just hide my sketch now. All right, so now what we can do is go over to insert and then down to insert McMaster car component. And we're gonna go for a threaded rod, uh, sorry, a threaded insert. And if you um, pick the threaded insert from here and scroll down, you'll find that you can select by material. So we want a, um, I want a, tap, a tapping insert for wood and I'm gonna use a brass one. So I want a brass tapping insert for hardwood. And I know that my thread size is an M5 because I'm gonna use an M5 bolt. And basically got one option. So click on that, go to product detail. And then if I scroll down, I can pick a 3D step and hit save. Once you hit save, Fusion is gonna actually load the 3D data from McMaster car in for you. So you can see it right there. And you'll also notice that it comes through with the serial number from McMaster car, meaning that when you go to order this, all you gotta do is punch that into the website and it's gonna come up with the exact component that it is that you were using. So I'm gonna just rotate around so that I can see the underside of my coffee table. And it's really important to note with the threaded insert that this slotted end, I zoom right in, that's the underside. So when you're modeling these and you're putting them in place, a lot of people assume that that slot is for using like a flathead screwdriver to thread them in. That's not what that's for. That goes on the underside. So make sure you rotate it the right way up. And then I am gonna hit capture position because I'm working with a component. So that when I move this into place, it's gonna be exactly where it needs to be. So next I'm gonna use point to point. And you can see that I can select the circle and it will pick the center point of that circle and then just bring it over here and that's in place and I can hit OK. And then I just need to copy this across. So I'm going to go right click, move slash copy and I'm going to hit create copy and my origin point is going to be there and that's going to be my target point. I hit OK and then just do that a couple more times. So. Uh, that's what I want to. So I want to move a component. Always remember to make sure this is set to the right thing. That's the component I want to move. That's my origin point. I want to make sure I hit create copy. And then my target point is going to be over here. One last time. And I want to create copy, origin point. Oops, wrong origin point. That's my origin point and that's my target point. Okay, last, uh, last thing to do is basically copy and paste all of this stuff across. So I have my hairpin leg and I've got my threaded inserts. Um, I can put my bolts in, but it's a five mil bolt. Like I know exactly what that looks like. I know which ones I'm gonna use. I don't need to worry about that. If you're interested in doing that yourself, you can find them again by going to insert and then McMaster car component and going to screws and bolts and basically picking the ones you want to use. I used a round headed um, uh, hex drive screw for mine and I wanted a button top and I used a metric and M5, which is there. And it's really important to note when you're purchasing your, um, your bolts, your screws rather, you get the right length. So the length is gonna be dependent on the threaded insert and the thickness of the plate. So when you're building one of these yourself, make sure that you measure that stuff up and get it right. So next, all I need to do is switch on my construction. So if I open up my construction. Ah, I didn't create my construction. Better do that. So we'll go to construct, mid plane, and I wanna pick this face here and the corresponding face on the other side. And I'm gonna repeat that. And hit okay. So I'm gonna be using these reference planes to do the mirror. And it's really important to note that when you um, create a construction plane, it is just for reference. And that means you can actually move it around if you need to. So I can grab that corner point and just sh shrink it like that and grab that corner point and just move it over here. It's still gonna behave the same way, but it's gonna be easier for me to select them now rather than having that really skinny piece and that huge thing that was in the way over there. 
So now to mirror this, what I'm going to do is go to create and then mirror. And the first thing I want to mirror is the holes themselves. So to do that, I'm going to pick features and the objects are going to be this in my timeline. And my mirror plane is going to be this one over here. And you'll see that it's mirrored across my um, holes. And I can just repeat that. So I go create and then mirror. And I want to use features again. And this time the feature is going to be this and this. And my mirror plane is going to be over here. And I hit OK. And once again, I've got my holes in place exactly where I would hope them to be. And then I can mirror one last time or two more times, go mirror. And this time I'm going to be mirroring components. And the objects I'm going to be mirroring are my linked file and my four threaded inserts. So the way I just selected those is by holding now shift on the keyboard and then clicking on the bottom one, it will grab the whole list. My first mirror plane is this. And you'll see that we've got everything mirrored across. And I'm going to do that one more time. That's my mirror plane. And then hit OK. I'm going to hide my construction plane. And that's our coffee table. Now, before I wrap this video up, there's still one le thing left to do. You'll remember in change parameters that I created a parameter called tool. And we haven't used it yet. Well, chances are, if you're making this and you're using solid wood, this thing would be really, really heavy. And so you'd probably want to cut a pocket out of this area here to lighten the thing out. And this is where that tool is going to come in handy. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to sketch, create sketch, and click on that bottom face there. Next, what I can do by hitting P on the keyboard, I can get the projection tool and click on the surface here, and you'll see these purple lines appear. Now the project tool basically brings in a silhouette of the body into your sketch so you can use it as reference. I'm going to use that as reference to now do some offsets. So I'm going to go to sketch, offset, and pick that um, edge that I just created, and I can start pulling this inwards. Now you want to make sure that the pocket sits inside of the legs, because if it's somewhere over here, it's going to start screwing up with the holes, because this area is going to be lower. So I'm going to bring it in here. I'm going to set this to 120 and hit OK. And now I can stop my sketch and I'm going to extrude this down. So I'll go create, extrude, and I'm going to make this half the depth of my stock. So if I put minus wood over two, I now have a half depth of my piece dug out. Now where the tool comes in is for these inside corners. Because when the CNC mill bit comes around, when my flat end mill bit comes around, that's not actually going to be a 90 degree angle. It's going to be whatever the diameter of my tool is that I'm using to cut the pocket out with. So what I'm going to do is go to modify and then fill it. I'm going to pick these internal corners and basically fillet them to my tool diameter. So if I just start typing T, hit tool, press enter, that's all set up. So lastly, you can now use your parameters table to start modifying this. Let's say when you cut it, you find out that actually you got more wood than you think and you can do something, you want to do something deeper. Well, you could set um, an inch and a half thick, for example, or close enough. And when you hit enter, everything is modified and updated accordingly. Your chamfers are going to be relative to what you set them with with the parameters table, as is the cut on the inside. And the same applies for the, the tool um, diameter too. I mean, I could set that to something massive like 20 and you'll see it comes through. Now, in my case, I'm just gonna undo that because I know what I've got. And when I check my wood later I can and I've faced it off, I can see what I've got and modify this accordingly. I hope that was useful and I'll catch you on the next one. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, if you got any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. If you want me to cover a tutorial on something that you don't know how to do, but you want to learn, throw it in the comments too. Don't forget to hit like. And if you're not subscribed, why not subscribe? I'll be throwing out videos every week. Catch you next time.